Eve Matchett. We've been proud to bring you this inaugural season of the GP2 Series for rising Formula One stars of the future, featuring, of course, young American Scott Speed from Manteca, California, who comes into this final weekend in third place in the championship. But the title itself was all about the top two men, Nico Rosberg and Heike Kovalainen. The main race was exciting, and of course, the results formed the grid for today's sprint race. Let's take a look at the highlights of Saturday's main event. Nico Rosberg, the championship leader by nine coming in, started from pole position, picking up two bonus points, making it 11 as he sought to become the first ever GP2 champion over this man, Heike Kovalainen, who led through the first 19 races of the season before giving up the lead to his rival. At the start, Nico Rosberg on the right here picture got the jump on Kovalainen, cutting across the track here in typical Michael Schumacher fashion, learning from the master. Dust being kicked up there, this track down gets in the middle of the desert. Rosberg hangs onto that lead. Nicholas Lapierre goes around his teammate Kovalainen at that first corner. Stuck on the grid at the back. Rosberg still leading. Lapierre gives that position back to his teammate Kovalainen. Now, however, because of the three stool cars at the start of the race, the safety car was brought out. They followed it, but for a single lap. And on the restart, Kovalainen rolled the dice and decided to get his mandatory one pit stop out of the way early, while Rosberg led the field down into turn one. The Kovalainen's strategy to work. He really needed to push, and that's just what he was doing, going wide here over that curbstone there, just right on the cutting edge of, of grip. Scott Speed worked his way through the field, and this happened. Something happened to the rear suspension. He spun off down into turn one runoff area. Also on lap 10, race leader Nico Rosberg came into the pits for his mandatory stop. And when he rejoined the race, he easily came out ahead of his rival, Kovalainen, for whom the championship was becoming very, very dim. Now, Rosberg was in position to clinch just in that scenario, but to put a stamp on things, his teammate Alex Primat made this great pass on Kovalainen for second place, giving Rosberg more than enough cushion between himself and his rival. And there he is, son of former Formula One world champion K.K. Rosberg. Nico Rosberg became the inaugural GP2 driver's champion with a bonus of having teammate Alex Primat in second place. Kovalainen finished third in race one. Now we reverse the top eight, meaning Nico Rosberg right there starts from eighth position, Primat seventh, Heike Kovalainen sixth, and so forth, putting Ernesto Vizo, the eighth place finisher in Saturday's main event, on pole position for this final race of the season. Well, Charlie Whiting, the race director for Formula One and, of course, for GP2 series, looking on. There's your front row, Yoshimoto and uh, Vito in the foreground here. Now, there are other battles going on through the field for position in the championship, not the least of which was Scott Speed. As you saw, he went off in race one. He'll start toward the back in race two. In fact, word now is that Scott Speed has gone to the pit lane to prepare for this sprint race with no mandatory pit stop. Speed trying to hold off Nico Rosberg's ART Grand Prix teammate, Alex Primat for third place in the final standings in 2005. As the field rolls off, let's take a look at the starting grid for this final race of the GP2 season. On row one, the BCN competition teammates are Desto Vizo of Venezuela and Hiroki Yoshimoto of Japan. On row two, Nicholas Lapierre, who of course is Scott Speed's teammate, and Giorgio Pantano, who's driven just about everything there is to drive in the world, including IRL this year. On row three, DAMS driver Jose Maria Lopez of Argentina, who has a win this year. And alongside him, Heike Kovalainen, the series leader in victories with five coming into this race. On row four, the two ART Grand Prix cars of Alexander Primat and, of course, Nico Rosberg, who's now the new champion. Back on row five, Adam Carroll of Great Britain for Supernova with two wins in this first season of the GP2 series alongside Juan Cruz Alvarez from Campos Racing. Varas Forzi from Malaysia in the DAM's car comes up in the 11th spot on the grid. Alexander Negrao, who is in the high-tech sports car, he is Piquet's teammate. On row seven, Clevio Piccioni from Monaco in the Durango team with a win this year. And Matthias Lauda, son of three-time Formula One world champion Nicky Lauda of Austria. Sergio Hernandez from Spain in the campus racing car lines up in 15th spot. Next to him, Neil Gianni from Switzerland with two wins this year. On row nine, Jan Artem of Turkey, iSport International teammate of American Scott Speed. And next to him, Giorgio Mondini of Italy for David Price Racing. Borja Garcia, another Spanish driver in the racing engineering car. 
alongside Olivier Pla in the second David Price racing car. He was looking pretty good in the middle of the season, winning at Silverson, but really faded a little bit since then. Bit of a specialist in these Sunday finales, starting from pole position on a couple of occasions. On row 11, Ferdinando Monfardini of Italy in the Coloni car, and next to him, American Scott Speed was to have started, but as I mentioned, Scott has gone to the pit lane. And bringing up the back of the row, we've got Nelson Piquet Jr., the high-tech Piquet sports car from Brazil. Obviously, he won in Spa in the rain. He also won the first two A1 Grand Prix at Brands Hatch alongside him, Gianni Bruni in the Duranga, who we thought had pulled out of that team, but now he's back again. So the Drivers' Championship is decided, but there are many stories still to tell. The season finale for GP2. Welcome back to the final event of the inaugural season of the GP2 Championship. Bob Varsha, David Hobbs, Steve Matchett with you. From the Bahrain International Circuit, FIA Delegate Charlie Whiting eyes the field, now in place. Here come the lights. Visa one pole, right of your screen. Making a pretty good start. Feel really fanning out. Somebody right down there up against the pit wall, kicking up a lot of dust. Great move by Giorgio Pantano, Pantano around the outside. Ooh, around the outside of Yoshimoto there at turn one. That was a brave move, but it came off to so Giorgio oh, Pantano. Cars going off everywhere, and there's a big spin to the back of your screen, and that is Heike Kovalainen second in the championship. Boy, he led this championship for so long. He must be just still unbelievable in the seat in Hampton. And he's lost the championship already. Ernesto Vizo leads. On board with Nico Rosberg, newly crowned champion, started from eighth place. Yeah, the car's suffering from a little bit of understeer. They need to get some heat into these tires. <laughs> That's not slowing him down. Picking up a position. Jose Maria Lopez, he got by for sixth position, so Nico Rosberg again on a oh. charge for front. Contact right there. That was Adam Carroll getting together with someone. Boy, Field the strength of the train of cars in this series. Well, we'd expect this sort of thing on a track as dirty as this one. Sergio Hernandez. I see no front wing on that car. That was the car that Adam Carroll hit. Yep, here you see it. Now that will induce some serious understanding. Yeah. <laughs> if he wasn't suffering from it before, he will be now. Yeah, you can see the track is still very dusty. The group already breaking away. If you're not familiar with the GP2 series, these are identical carbon fiber monocoque. The chassis is all built by the Italian Dallara firm to the dimensions of Formula One cars. Lots of ground effects, very, very adjustable. Renault built engines tuned by Heine Motor Racing of Geneva. Four liter V8s making about 580 horsepower. Rosberg now up to fifth. Nicolas Lapierre ahead of him on the road. Notice how flat this track is. Very little in the way of visual cues for the drivers on turning. Yeah, and it's late afternoon, so the sun is very low. So the shadows are long, and it's difficult for these drivers they, when they're going into the sun, getting a new front wing fitted on Hernandez's car. It looks, looks like a fairly a elaborate procedure. Like they're they're just going to say the same thing. It looks like a very elaborate Yeah, you procedure. have to lift that front damper cover up on these Dallara chassis to take the nose off. All the cars are on the same Bridgestone Potenza tires. Ooh, Giorgio Pantano Whoa. locking up big time there, trying to keep Yoshimoto at bay. Yoshimoto under pressure now from Lapierre, right behind Lapierre, Nick, Nico Rosberg. Back both of the ART cars there, Rosberg and Prebat right behind him. Lapierre having a look down the inside of Yoshimoto, decides he can't pull it off. Let's have a look at the start. Now, as you mentioned, David, look at the fan. Just if these cars pull left, right, yeah, I mean, extraordinary, a lot of dust on the track as these guys pull off that racing line. Giorgio Pantano at the bottom of the screen here, going around the outside of Yoshimoto at turn one. That was a pretty good move, pulled it off. Oh, well, there you see contact. And that's, is that Hernandez's front wing? That's that wing going there. Yeah. On board with Rosberg. Yeah, with Rosberg. Kovalainen just ahead, and he's going to be squeezed to the wall. Well, Kovalainen could have squeezed him to the wall there if he tried, I suppose. Oh, that's Jose Maria Lopez just ahead. 
There's an understeer you're talking about, Steve. Yeah. <laughs> the tire's, of course, got no temperature at all, isn't it? Whoa! <laughs> this is Kovalainen's misstep. Yeah. On board. Oh. No! I thought he was victimized I, I, by the curves. Did he get punted? I think he got punted from behind and helped him around there. It all, it all looked pretty easy and under control, but uh, certainly got a, a bit of a, a little nudge from the back of the... Jean marie Bruni there, fastest lap in the Durango car. He left the team in disgust about three races ago, and here he is back again, so... Um, he wasn't that disgusted. And, and, obviously not, and obviously the car's not that bad if he's just on the fastest lap. Actually, that was the Coloni team that he left. Disappeared for a race or two and then turned up at Durango. Well, that's what I said. We heard there was a lawsuit to be filed over that, but I'm not sure anything ever came of it. Of course, you should forget it. Bahrain, we think about the amount of dust on the track. When you see those wide shots, you see the desert out there just to the side of the track. No wonder it's dusty. Well, that's the same problem the Formula One drivers find. And this track will be the site of the season opening race in 2006. So what do we got here? Rosberg slowed suddenly come off yeah. the corner, and Nicolas Lapierre got into the back of it. Well, Rosberg had just got around Lapierre going into that turn, and uh, suddenly seemed to lose way going through the corner, and Lapierre bumped him up the rear, but uh, didn't seem to have done any damage to either car. There's all those sand dunes. Look at them out there. No wonder. I mean, the slight bit of wind and it dust all over that track. Track designed by German Hermann Tilke is pretty much the architect du jour at Formula One right now. There's Rosberg in the white car, trying to make up ground on LaPierre, but he won't get him that time. Alexander Prima, about his teammate right behind him. LaPierre was looking to get away without any damage to his front wing. Oh, he was. It's earlier on, because I'm sure there was some contact. There must have been. Giorgio Pantano still hanging on to second spot behind Ernesto Bizzo. He's having a good run. These tyres are coming up to temperature now, and they were up to temperature by now. They were certainly suffering at the start of the race with the steer. Look at Rosberg. Getting left. No, right, he's getting his hand in the air. He had a problem. Something happened there. So sequential gearboxes, paddle shift mechanisms. So he didn't put his hand up to give a bit of warning, but Lapierre, oh, somebody else smoking in front there. Whoa, oh. Lapierre loses a bit of ground there, but locking up from the inside ah, wheels yeah, of yeah. Rosberg. Boy, this is a tough race. It is. Side by side. I wonder if Rosberg was so intent on getting by Lapierre, he went into the turn in the wrong gear. Oh, yeah, yeah, something like that. Rosberg there trying to hold Lapierre off, and he seems to have pulled it up. A little bit, uh, round a little bit wide. Primat now trying to get under Lapierre. The ART team owned in part by the son of Ferrari's team director, Jean Toe. Nicholas Toe is the boss for both Primat and Rosberg. Welcome back to the final round of the GP2 Championship for 2005 in Bahrain. Bob Varsha, David Hobbs, Steve Matchett with you. There you see the running order. Ernesto Vizo started from pole and holds it over Giorgio Pantano, Hiroki Yoshimoto, and newly crowned GP2 champion for 2005, Nico Rosberg. Who has, in fact, pulled away from that group. But look at this, Nicolas Lapierre, Alexander Primat, really going at it down into turn one. Primat gets around him, Lapierre doesn't give up one little bit right behind him as they come out onto that straight. Lopez watching that battle in the aqua-colored car. These drivers are not afraid to use any bit of this pavement despite the fact that the track seems to be extremely dusty. And again, Lapierre coming back on Primat, side by side, and of course, Lopez. <laughs> Great race. Boy, oh boy, Lapierre. Now, of course, here comes Alvarez right. right in there. Lopez, I want this right now. Uh, Lopez gets under Lapierre. With a host of followers. So Primat gets in front, but Lapierre and Lopez absolutely side by oh. side. Harold diving in there. <laughs> On board with Adam Carroll in 10th. Well, that close action is clear indication that these GP2 cars are certainly much more able to run in, in close uh, line to each other that the F1 cars can't because of that underbody styling, isn't it? You would never see that in Grand Prix racing. Nico Rosberg getting around Hiroki 
Yoshimoto for third place. Well, Nico Rosberg, who started back in eighth spot, is now up to third, making sure that Yoshimoto doesn't get by again there, He's doing a little bit of blocking. But now, all he's got in front of him now is Giorgio Pantano and Ernesto Visa. Well, we've seen Rosberg do this over and over again. He didn't pick up his first win until the second race of the weekend at Manicur in France back in round five of the season. That was the ninth race of 23 in the season. Picked up his first pole the weekend after that, but since then, he has simply been the dominant car in the city. Nelson Piquet Jr., Ooh. another second generation star. Jorge yep. Garcia getting in front of him. Went under Jan Artan there, the Turkish driver, but Garcia right in front of him. So Nelson uh, Piquet Jr. really had a very good run just lately, but not doing so well right here. Winning that wet race at Spa, looking really good. And of course, winning those two A1 GPs at Brands Hatch That's right. a couple of weeks ago. Maria Bruni, one of two drivers in this field with Formula One experience, Giorgio Pantano being the other. Kind of waffling around back here in 18th place. Not what you'd expect of a guy with his experience. No! Oh, Jani locks him up and goes way wide. Jan Artam, Scott Speed's teammate, going to have a look down the inside. Oh, touching wheels there. Backwards a little bit now. On board with Nico Rosberg again. Boy, this is, this is for Pantano. second. Pantano, he's wound Pantano in. Tries to go around the outside. Not pulling that one off. Pantano holds him at bay. But it can only be a matter of time. Nico Rosberg has really just done brilliant in this race. Coming from eighth on the grid, pulling him up. Having a really good go there at Pantano. Gathering himself up again now to think about it again. Heavy yeah, breaking down him. into that turn one. A lot of dust coming out of the rims. Pretty much seems to have got away from Lapierre, who's still being followed closely by Garcia. Interesting configuration of cooling on the cars. You'll see some of them. One, one of the problems on this Delara chassis all season long has been cooling for the radiators. They introduced some new radiator cooling fins and ducting for the French round at uh, round five. Matthias Lauda having a new nose. You see, it's got a lot of complex procedures. You guys were saying earlier on in comparison to the F1 cars to change that nose. But you have a look at the cooling on these cars. You'll see some of them are running the cooling on the side pods right open. Wow, what a lockup from Pantano. <laughs> Huge lockup. That was a, you're right. Awful lot of crud on that camera lens, too. I wonder if Pantano's car is giving up some fluid. Now, you might think that, that same crud is going to be on the driver's visor, but it's not quite as bad because he's sitting much slower than the camera. The camera really gets the worst of it because that little tiny screen in front of the driver sends it over the driver's head. Nico going up the inside there. Pantano locking up big time again. Boy, his tyres must be like threatening bits now. Uh, Ross Berg like gets uh, by and pulls away. Like a dogfight with Pantano's car leaving a contrail. And so that puts the new champion up into second place behind Ernesto Vito. He make the complete sweep. Oh, Pantano getting squirrely. Back at the final round of the GP2 Championship in Bahrain. With Steve Matchett and David Hobbs, I'm Bob Varsha. Ernesto Vizo is the leader. Newly crowned champion, Nico Rosberg runs second. Giorgio Pantano third. You see Alex Primat in the other ART white team car working his way forward as well. Right now battling with Yoshimoto for fifth place. Diving in and out there, tries to go down the inside. This tight is turn three, then we've got some sweeping turns coming up. It's going to be difficult to get by him through here, but dogging his footsteps. Right behind him, Nicolas Lapierre still not giving up. This is a replay of Pantano sliding Ooh. a little bit. Whoa. That was just as we went to break. We saw it from on board, Rosberg's car. This is the guy from the ART crew. team, the ART team. Let's 
beginning to close up again. And that's Deviso, of course, likes all this, as does Nicholas Nico Rosberg, who's got away from this group with Pantano, Yoshimoto, Primat, Lapierre, all absolutely glued together, diving in and out of each other. And as Steve said, you know, these cars seem to handle much better in traffic than, yeah. than their big cousins in Formula One. I think they've done a, a superb job with the aerodynamics. That ground effect styling, being able to sculpt the underside of the body to give more efficient downforce in the front wing has enabled the cars to run a lot closer to each other. And that's, that's giving that very close racing we're seeing. Oh, pretty much. God, those wheels must have been a paper. That looked like Yashimoto was opening the door for him there and then closed it suddenly. I'm wondering if these Bridgestone tires, perhaps... Look at them streaming across the wall. <laughs> Yoshimoto trying to shake Primat off. Primat goes down the inside on the dusty side. Yeah, he'll say thank you very much. Uh, Primat makes a stick. Yoshimoto has to lift just momentarily, so... Primat is in front of Yoshimoto now. Lapierre still lurking. Lopez right behind him. lock-up tires <laughs> being tortured around here you know these tires will take abuse <laughs> well, is that Lapierre going wide Lapierre goes very wide letting through Lopez who's going slowly and not regaining the racetrack he must have a problem oh the car look at yeah, he's got a puncture uh, yeah, yeah, yeah the right front is right up in the air it was sure indication that the left rear is down that was a problem Formula One cars suffered in their first visit to this racetrack. Uh, the tire went down first. Uh, that was, that's very unfortunate because you can see that right front trailing smoke big time as it uh, gradually got lifted off the ground when the left rear collapsed. Oh, Mondini. The old David Price racing car there. There's the open cooling I was talking about earlier yeah. on. You see some of the cars are in those shark gill covers over the uh, radiators to control the cooling. Here's the Arden crew awaiting Lapierre. But in a sprint format like this, his race is shot. Yeah. Done for. Bridgestone bring three compounds, soft, medium, and hard. But the decision is down to Bridgestone, and all the teams have to run the same compound. So none of the teams and none of the drivers has an advantage by running the softer compound tyres in comparison to the opposition who have to run a hard one for durability. They're all on exactly the same compound. As I say, that decision is down to Bridgestone at the start of the weekend. Uh, Primat takes a look for third place, but can't get around the Italian Pantano. They take a break and return with more. The final race of the inaugural GP2 season from Bahrain. On an all-new Texas hardtail. Hey, see the lottery? 120. Welcome back to the GP2 finale from Bahrain. This is Giorgio Pantano trying to hold off Alex Primat for third behind race leader Ernesto Vizo and newly crowned champion Nico Rosberg. Nico Rosberg just fought his way there. You see, look at this now. Nico Rosberg is caught right up with Ernesto Vizo for the lead of this race. Rosberg starting eighth position. Pantano all over the racetrack trying to keep Primat behind him Primat. and they will go wheel to wheel into one. Ooh, but Primat has to give way but then he's followed by this little left and right hand sweep again. Meanwhile back at the, the front here of Viso now really front. having a mirror absolutely full of Rosberg. Well it figures that Rosberg who dominated race one while well, Viso finished eighth would have the advantage here in race two. So many times we've seen in the second race when the guy who's on the pole has in fact swanned off into the distance, right. like, like Olivier Pla in Silverstone, and we've seen it before, but uh, he made an art form out of it. And Ernesto Vizo was looking pretty good in this race, but look at the way Rosberg's catching him up Ooh. and breaking there. Oh, right down that tight left hand hairpin. And now they're going to pick traffic. up lap traffic. That's Lapierre, Lapierre back on track after that flat tire. Rosberg looking down the inside. Now. Light must be getting difficult for these guys now. Anybody's got any dirt on their visor at all when they turn into that sun, it's very, very low. And of course, piercingly clear in that desert air. Visa struggling now to hold Nico Rosberg off. Rosberg getting a good toe down here, getting right under the wing. This is down to that last turn, which is a good overtaking spot. Yeah, no. 
Can't make it. <laughs> he keeps popping his head out and having Whoa, a look, doesn't boy, he? Boy, he is close as they go for that turn. Trying to force an error, perhaps. Yeah. Now, how about coming down into turn one? Now, they may not catch LaPierre, who showed good speed before that flat tire slowed him. And he's also got fresh tires now. Ross now. We're going to try it around the outside. He might have better oh. grip here. Oh. The old hip check. It's a difficult one to pull off. Visa coming down into turn one there has kind of preempted the move and pulled over to the inside to try and block. But Talking preempting, here's Primat's got around Giorgio Pantano now. Yoshimoto there, Lopez has got Yoshimoto in his sights. Big, big struggle for these placing. Down there, Lopez yeah. goes on the inside of Yoshimoto. This is for fifth spot. Did they and touch? he pulls it off. Alvarez closing up. Yoshimoto started on the front row, finishing seventh in yesterday's race, but he's losing time. One cross over us, uh, Alvarez right on the outside. Now he's going to be on the inside and pulls it off. Oh. Ah, Whoa, oh, oh. <laughs> now! Oh! oh. <laughs> This is great it's fascinating stuff. stuff, isn't it? Oh, my. Oh, my gosh. Alvarez there was duking it out, drops back to ninth. Well, these guys are not afraid to use pavement wherever it lies. Negrau and Monfredini battling for 11th, and they'll be wheeled to wheel. Oh. Pretty breathtaking stuff here in GP2, I must say. And the season got off to a bit of a rocky start. PK Jr. trying to force his way forward. Remember when the season began at Imola in Italy, these cars were right out of the box. We had all kinds of mechanical problems. They had to jump from a standing start to a rolling start. But the cars have really been, the teams have worked so hard on them, the cars are now much more hardy, as you can tell by that contact and replay. And they are quick, and these guys will just race them anywhere. Ernesto Vizio still holding off Nico Rosberg. Of course, we're only halfway through this race yet, so Rosberg's got a bit of time to work on him. And working on him he is too, big time. Another look at Piquet Jr. Ooh. And Monfordini, oh. What a bit of banging of wheels there, I'd say. Exactly. Another go. Montpellier went wide. Very wide. Now this is Primat on the right in white and Giorgio Pantano. And that's for that third and final podium position. Primat moving up. The ART team has already clinched the team title for 2005. They did that at the previous round at Spa Francorchamps in Belgium. To put a period on the season or an exclamation point with a 1 2 finish. But right now they are 2 3, Rosberg and Primat behind Ernesto Vizo, who is going for his first victory of the year. Alvarez, of course, was trying to get around Lopez earlier on for that fifth spot. Now he's back in eight. He's got back, he dropped back to ninth. Now he's back to eight. Oh, Rosberg <laughs> locking them all up there. Talking about flat spot in those tyres, David, earlier on. That master flat spot in the tyres. Huge flat spot, I think. He's lucky he didn't run right in the back of uh, Ernesto Visa. Now down into turn one again. Oh! oh. <laughs> Launching down the inside, out of the slipstream. Can Vizo fight back? No, he cannot. And so Nico Rosberg moves into first place. Vizo's best of the season thus far, second. And behind them, is this is Lopez going around Pantano? for fourth spot as the Italian begins to fade. Well, Pantano, he qualified in fourth, jumped up to second at the start, now he's back to fifth. Another driver who still has not picked up a victory this year for Scott Speed from Manteca, California, the highest ranked man in the championship who has not won, it appears he will not today. You torture. Welcome back. Waning laps of the final GP2 race of 2005. Saturday main events run about 112 miles. The Sunday sprint events such as this one, about 80 miles. On board with Adam Carroll. 
Looking up ahead at Hiroki Yashimoto. This is for sixth place. Yashimoto, of course, started on the front, has gradually slipped down through the running order. Adam Carroll now wheel to wheel with him, going for that tight infield right hander. This traffic jam. Adam Carroll has had a real roller coaster of a season. He's picked up a couple of victories, but we've also seen him mired in mid pack from race to race. And he has also had a couple of huge offs. Oh! Alvarez going off around the outside. Fauzi down the inside. And Alex Negrau just slid right on through between them. goes off Alvarez again. Alvarez has suddenly gone to pop. I mean, it's just a couple of laps back. He was dicing it out for fifth, and he keeps on rolling back to the field, keeps running wide, and because every time he does that, he picks up more stuff on his tires, yeah. and his tires lose their efficiency, and he just keeps on sliding back to the field. I saw that a couple of corners ago, Alvarez running wide. You saw the cloud of dust come up. You're not afraid to try different lines, but as you say, David, you get that dust on your tires, and for the next two or three corners after that, you're going to be suffering, and that keep, keeps catching him out lap after lap. Contact there. That's why Alvarez went wide. Got pushed up there by Piccioni. We jump stars don't need an extra invitation when someone opens the door. I see what you mean by that late afternoon sun, David. Now yeah. look at it. Adam Carroll, of course. One of the wins he did have, of course, was Monte Carlo back in the early summer. Piccioni goes wide. in the series who have signed development deals with Formula One teams, do some off-season testing, maybe some Friday driver duties in 2006. Yoshimoto dropped down to six, as you can see there, Adam Carroll breathing down his neck now, Piccioni right behind him, the has come up from way down in the qualifying order. Piquet Jr. now 12th, he started 23rd. Yeah, he's coming up to the field, but of course you can see how evenly matched these cars are, so if you do start at the back of these things, you're pretty much out of luck. It's just very hard to make ground. Matthias Lauda qualified 14th, as you can see, is right back down now in 21st spot. As you said earlier on, Bob, Lauda having had a very, very disappointing season compared to his other Grand Prix sons, Nico Rosberg in particular, of course, and even uh, Nelson Piquet Jr. doing better. It's been a very successful championship, hasn't it, this GP2? And the Formula One team is certainly taking notice. The whole thing just seems a lot more professional than the old F3000 races. The way the, the way the teams are run, the way the cars work, and the quality of the driving, I think he's got a lot, lot going for him. These guys are really, really just no quarter given or us, is it? Just duking it out. They put on a great show. Carol and Yashimoto continue that battle. In the main race on Saturday, eight, the top eight finishers receive championship points. Just six scorers on Sunday. And there are a couple of championship battles still to be decided. Giorgio Pantano needs to score because two points are all that separate sixth place Neil Yanni from eighth place Nelson Piquet Jr. in the standings with Pantano in the middle. Just three laps remaining in the 2005 GP2 season at the Bahrain International Circuit. Watching Hiroki Yashimoto in sixth place, then Adam Carroll and a host of others still fighting for position. Alex Negrau, Farouz Fauzi, Fernando Monfardini, Nelson Piquet Jr., Juan Cruz Alvarez. Fauzi having a pretty good race. He has He's had a bit of a lackluster season one way or another, but this is uh, one of his better races. He's really sticking his neck out today, and as, as is Negrau, too. We haven't seen Negrau do a lot this year, but he's uh, humming right along this afternoon. 
Well, this is the last chance to score points. Yashimoto's in six. That's the final points paying position. So all these guys have a shot, particularly guys like Fauzi, who have not scored yet this year. It'd be nice to go into the winner with a point. Yeah, wouldn't it? It's so destroyed to go for all year and not score a single point. As we stand right now, Scott Speed holds fast lap of the race, and that's worth a couple of bonus points. And he is locked in a battle with Alex Primat for third in the championship. So even if Speed cannot come away with a victory in this inaugural season for the series, he might still be able to hang on to third place in the points. But Primat is running in third spot right now. This is on board with Adam Carroll. Clear. There's Piccioni out the back of Adam Carroll. That glare getting really bad now as this racing joint concludes. Only a couple more laps to go. Need big mirrors on these cars. Ernesto Viso and Alex Primat. Always a lot of brake dust coming out of Viso's car, more than the others. Ernesto Viso led for the first half of this race, and uh, Nico Rosberg rested the lead away from there. Goes Piccioni on the inside of Adam Carroll. That's for seventh spot. Still out of the points, but it's still seventh for Piccioni. Just going to pick off, pick off one more, and he can get that point. Final yeah. point for six. Adam Carroll locking up there. Yoshimoto just ahead of now, just ahead of Piccioni. The last point paying position. Well, they're all locking oh, up. Oh, <laughs> twisted Bridgestones for everyone. There's the growl right behind Adam Carroll now. Well, if they've been trying to nurse these tyres to last the duration of this race. They're giving up now, aren't they? They're throwing caution to the wind. It's just everything to try and get that last little, last little bit of performance out of the car, the two laps to go. A unique engine note for these V8 motors with an eight into one exhaust system. You can just see the, the single exhaust the nozzle just under the rear wing strut. There's your running order. Yoshimoto still in sixth. Primat and Viso for second. Oh, oh. I can't believe he didn't take Primat's left front wheel, right front wheel off. And that's Scott Speed there, but unfortunately he's a lap down. So obviously he would dearly love to have beaten Primat today. He's got those at two points for fastest lap. Well, rough arithmetic tells me if Primat gets Viso for second place, it might bump Scott Speed out of third in the championship, almost certainly if Speed loses fast lap of the race. So you watch Carol Piccioni battle. Meanwhile, up front, Nico Rosberg having it all his own way, working his way from eighth to the lead and then simply checking out on this field of future Grand Prix stars. Fantastic season. It got up to a bit of a slow start. His first uh, podium was in Monte Carlo. He was third, and he was third in the first race at the Nürburgring. Then he started to have some wins, and then just right at the end, from Turkey on, boy, he's been third, second, second, third, fifth, and of course he won the race yesterday, and obviously going to win this one. So he's really come on strong at the end of the season. And that will tie him with Heike Kovalainen for series high victories with five. And there it is. Checkered flag for Nico Rosberg, who has been speaking with the Williams Formula One team about a drive in 2006. That story yet to unfold during the offseason. So Visa holds off Primat for third. Now you see Scott Speed a lap down just behind Primat. Adam Carroll. And it appears that Scott Speed's fast lap will hold up for two bonus points. And with Primat finishing in third, Scott Speed will hold on to third in the standings.
by one half point. Ugh. We had a race this year that ended short of full distance. Half points were awarded. And by one half of a point, Scott Speed will finish third. Congratulations to Nico Rosberg. Definitely the coming man and the inaugural GP2 champion. We'll be back in a moment for a look at the final podium of the inaugural season of GP2. Stay with us. Welcome back. There is race winner and GP2 champion Nico Rosberg accepting his trophy. Alex Primat, his teammate on the right, Ernesto Vizo, second place finisher in today's finale on the left. Nico Rosberg, son of 1982 world champion KK Rosberg. Here's Nicholas Tote, his manager and a partner in the ART team. KK Rosberg, of course, finished to his core. Nico Rosberg, born in Germany, you see the German flag over his head. He speaks not a word of his father's native language. And Esther Visa there with this uh, second place, starting on the pole, and really uh, fought all day long to keep Rosberg off, and then finally Primat, but there's Primat picking up the third spot trophy. Those points will break Ernesto Vizo out of a log jam back around 14th in the championship. He'll move up. <laughs> T-shirts all around for Nico Rosberg. Quite a season for ART. Oh, terrific season for the... Obviously, you know, in these inaugural seasons, you want to do well, but no one would have ever dreamt that they would do that well. Both drivers on the podium for the last race. Nico Rosberg, I tell you what, he has come on so strong. Up till Silverson, Heike Kovalainen looked like an absolute runaway winner of this championship. He was strong right out of the box, looked enormously successful, and Rosberg has just come on gangbusters in the last half of the season. Eight different pole sitters and ten different race winners in 23 races this year. Let's have a look at the final results of today's race. Well, there you see Rosberg came from eighth to first. Vizo went from first to second. Primat came up with Rosberg from seventh on the grid. Lopez doing a great job in the dams car. Giorgio Pantano dropping back. Looked good at the start of the race, but slipped back, as did Yoshimoto. Piccioni uh, coming up well. Adam Carroll staying about where he started. Negrau also came up well through the field. Much better than his teammate Nelson Piquet Jr. who started off at 21st but came up to 15th there. Neil Janney and Jan <laughs> Alvarez had a pretty interesting day there sliding off the road on a number of occasions. Boy, I guess. And Scott Speed down there in 19th spot. Not a good uh, weekend for him at all. Suspension breaking yesterday and 19th today. Here's a look at the final standings in the Drivers' Championship. Well, there you see Rosberg on top with 120, Kovalainen with 105. Suddenly at the end there, Rosberg leaping into the front. Kovalainen leading just about the entire season. And Scott Speed with that half point <laughs> that half got him point ahead of him. Yeah, with Prima and 67. <laughs> it's a bit Speed close to 67 confident, and, it? and a half, yeah. <laughs> Adam Carroll, a bit disappointed, no doubt, to be quite so far down in terms of points. And there's Garcia with the other half point score. Ernesto Visa winds up equal 11th in the championship after coming into this final race in 14th. Now on to the team championships, dominated and clinched at the previous round of the championship in Belgium. Congratulations to ART Grand Prix. They've done a fantastic job. Yeah, 187 points, look way out in front. Arden International, second spot with 126. Supernova take third spot. High Sport International in fourth. Colony in seventh on 36, equal with Dams on 36. And right down the bottom, Campos Racing, seven and a half points. And that brings our speed coverage of the inaugural season of the GP2 Championship to a close. We'd like to send our congratulations to Nico Rosberg and his ART Grand Prix team, taking home both the drivers and team championships. We've enjoyed bringing you coverage of the season. We hope you'll join us again next year to watch tomorrow's Formula One stars battle it out for the GP2 Championship. For David Hobbs, Steve Matchett, and Peter Windsor, who's been with us all year long, I'm Bob Varsha. So long, everybody.